All right, all right, all right. How is it going in it? Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. It is going to be a good, good day. I am extremely excited for this one. Um, frankly, I don't think I've actually been this excited about a session since we did uh, the very fated Learn a Unique Language session, which if anyone... If anyone's shown up for that one, you will know precisely what I'm talking about. That was a real experience um, in more ways than one. And we are going to have a heck of a lot of fun today. We are going to be doing some 3D modeling. I am going to be answering pretty much any question that you happen to have about 3D modeling. Um, so yeah, this is, this is going to be a pretty awesome one. Um, if you all happen to have any questions at all during this, I am very much going to be keeping an eye on, uh, well, not just Twitch chat, but all of the various chats. So if you happen to have a question, something that you want answered, anything else, just drop it in chat and I will be more than happy to answer it. In the meanwhile, we are going to be giving you a general introduction to 3D modeling, uh, some general tips that you want to keep an eye out for, uh, what sort of software you want to be generally using for it, um, and why you'd want to do it in the first place. Like, I mean, hey, you can, you can do it, but why, sh why, why would you want to? Well, let's start right at the beginning of all of this. So, if you're generally, actually, before I start, I should say, is the background or uh, background music levels um, about where everyone would like them? I, I I'm double checking this now so that I don't have to tweak it later. I think I think we're looking good. I think we're looking good. All right, awesome. So, 3D modeling. Why would you want to do a 3D model? Well, there's a couple of reasons. You might want to do 3D models to, for example, like make stuff to put in your games. You might want to do 3D modeling for like, I don't know, maybe you want to put it on your website. I know that po if anyone here has ever used Polywork, you'll know that they absolutely love their like WebGL 3D models. That stuff's wild. Um, but the reason that I generally tend to want to make 3D models is because I want to make stuff. Um, I am a big, big person when it comes to like, 3D printing stuff and like just being able to take like ideas that you've got and like actually make them and being able to 3D model is one of the quickest ways that you can possibly take an idea that you've got in your head and turn it into something that you can like physically have in your hand. Um, like let me let me find an example of this right so um, I've been doing a lot of upgrades to one of my uh, 3D printers. Um, and I'm actually going to show you uh, one of the upgrades that I've been working on right now um, as a little example of this. So we are going to pop ourselves into a piece of software called Fusion 360. And you can go head on over to uh, Fusion 360's site, uh, Autodesk, and oh, I need to go to the matter. Uh, and you'll be able to pretty much everybody, if you are planning on using this for non-profit use, then you are 100% able to um, you are 100% able to get yourself a free license for Fusion 360 on their um, on their non-profit or um, it's non-profit and uh, education plan. Um, and what that means is that you can basically um, you get yourself a license. It's a little bit more restricted than having like a full license. Um, which is what I've got, uh, but it still allows you to do a whole bunch of really awesome stuff. The only real big restriction is that you can't edit more than like one project at once, which is usually fine when you're learning. If you start to get up to like more complex stuff, you'll probably want to like get a bit beyond that, but for basic stuff, it's great. Um, so yeah, um, as, as an example of like how quickly you can go from like having a thing to like actually like getting something working in the real world, um, so, for example, I have been... Oh, where's it gone? Air structure? I'm 90% sure I had this file in here somewhere. Um, but yeah, as an example, let's say that... Here we are. So let's say that you have a 3D printer. <laughs> Specifically, you have an entire 3D printer model in your um, Infusion 360. And this is... This is awesome, especially because if you can get usually models for basically any 3D printer online, like you can go and actually look at what your printer looks like in 3D space. But this is awesome because then you can actually go ahead and like design parts for it. So in my case, 
you can see here, I have modeled up uh, this bit here, which is a cable chain. Um, so I wanted to go, okay, instead of having like a little dangly bit off the back of my like 3D print bed, I want to make a like cable chain just to keep things a bit neater. And then once you model that up, you can go ahead, you uh, can pick like your, ca your cable chain and say, all right, I'm going to go and uh, I'm going to go and export that out. Uh, we go, we go and export that out of, uh, out of, out of this, uh, out of Fusion 360. And we move on over to a, uh, move on over to what we call our slicer. And this is basically the software that takes our 3D model and it puts our 3D model into uh, a, a format that our 3D printer is able to understand. Um, and it's literally as simple as I pick the thing in, I pick the thing, like pick my model, drop it into this. Um, I set a few settings in here. I click slice now, and then I have the entire model all split down nicely into layers uh, that I can then use to uh, to create it. And from about uh, maybe 20, 25 minutes after I designed the, um, after I designed this part, so you can see here, you've got all of your layers. Um, you can see about 25 minutes after I, des I designed this part, um, I have a physical part in my hand. Um, and like so, if you can see this, just literally comes out. Congratulations, you've got cable chain links. Um, it's going to see where's the Valhaj content. This is a two hour stream. We are way, way, way early for like... For, for like there, there is time there is 100% time and the like the baseline for this is that we are first and foremost going to be teaching people about 3d modeling stuff so I'm gonna start on that basis and then we'll move forward um y'all 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 got time y'all got time so let's head back into um well but actually before before we head back into fusion um I feel the need to explain to you a couple of things around um how uh, how this all works so let's drop fusion back up on the screen there we go so there's a couple of things that you're going to want to know when you first jump into any sort of 3d modeling project um, and the first one is going to be how do you move around because you ultimately are going to be having a hell of a time um like trying to figure out initially you'll be like okay i'm like pulling the thing and i can't move and how is how do it, it, it's it's bad help me ah um, yeah, that, that, I mean, yeah, that, that's just generally the like first hand experience that most people tend to have with 3D modeling software. Um, so there's a couple of ways that you can sort of make this easier on yourself. Um, the, the, fir the first way really is to take a look at this tiny bar at the bottom. This tiny bar at the bottom is going to be your absolute best friend. Um, if you are only controlling your 3D models with a mouse, uh, because these are basically your like most critical things here. So you've got, for example, orbit. And what this does is this basically, you click that, it brings this little tool up and then you can click, like left click, and then just drag around and that will like basically rotate on the axis of wherever you are grabbing. Um, and this lets you basically, um, and this basically lets you uh, like look around your model and figure out precisely how everything's doing. Great, good, fine. So that's cool. But let's say I want to move right. Um, and the like orbit tool is 100% not going to let me do that. It is just going to let me rotate stuff. So once we've like figured out where we want to be, we head down to the bottom and we click the pan tool. Um, and that way we can sort of like drag the object around. We can go like left, right, but we can only do it on the axis that we're currently looking at it from. So if I want to like move the front up, I need to point myself at the front and then go and select the pan tool and then like take a look at the front of it. Um, and that's basically how that works out. Won't the print take long? Which print? Hang on, we're doing we're doing a print. I that that used to me. Um, but yeah, so basically that's that's your general tools for how you want to be like uh, for, for how you want to be looking around. How you how you generally want to um, for how, how you generally want to take a look at all of this stuff. Um, so that's th these two tools here, orbit and, and pan, are basically going to be your best friends forever. Uh, zooming is usually just done with a mouse wheel. There's also a zoom tool down here if you want to like do it just with a mouse. If you haven't got a mouse wheel or if you don't fancy scrolling that day, um, and then there's also the lookout tool, which is quite cool. So you can actually pick this one and you can 
pick an object and like pick an angle to look at it from and then it will just be like okay we'll just like I just be like okay I want to look at the thing and then it's just like we'll just go okay cool we'll just go over there uh, which is great it like helps you massively now you will note I am doing very fancy things like this where I can just sort of like be like okay I'm gonna go and do the thing and we're gonna look down here and then we're gonna look up here and we're gonna spin it around and everything is gonna be great and cool and fine and you're like, th there is no way that, the, that that this person has like, is like switching things at the bottom of the screen that quickly. And you are absolutely right. I am 100% not doing that because that would be awful and horrible. I am using a fancy little tool like this. Um, and this, if I can get the camera to focus. Come on, there we go. This is made by a company called 3D Connection. And this is called a space mouse. And what this does is this lets me, and I will try and demonstrate this while I also have it here. If I pull up, it, oh, hang on. I'm going to need to be in there for this one. Uh, yep, there we go. So if I pull up, moves the model up. If I go down, pulls the model down. If I move it left, right, twist. And this basically allows me to move the model pretty much in any direction that I want with like so usually the way when i'm doing modeling is i'll have a space mouse in one hand and my actual mouse in the other hand and that way i can basically i can move the model independently of when i'm clicking stuff and doing other things um this is absolutely i will say this is 100 percent not a requirement um you can absolutely like do all of your controls with the like orbit and pan tools but having having something like this takes like all of the effort out of it because you can just like you can literally just be like it, it, it the way the way it feels is it's like you're moving the object around in your hand and then you can just sort of like move, basically just literally shift around and it just does the thing which is great um i will say the learning curve for it is like really um let me try and find a link for that actually i'm going to i'll chuck you all a uh, a link it's about um i they, they cost i think about 100 30 pounds UK. I don't know how that translates out to other currency. Um, but yeah, they're pretty cool. Um, I, I'm a big fan of them. I will say that the learning curve is like quite heavy with them. Um, like it's, it's you, you, there's a bit of like heft required to actually get to like figure it out in your head. Um, and then like, uh, and then like work out from there. Um, which is kind of a heck of a time. Um, but once you, once you actually figure out like once you actually figure out how um, uh, what's, what's it called once you figure out how to actually use it it goes from being like one of the hardest things in like all of 3D modeling to one of the easiest um, and it is genuinely kind of amazing. Uh, what software am I using? Uh, all of this is being done. Uh, you can see right at the top there. Um, it says here we are Autodesk Fusion 360. Um, is what you're after. Um, is precisely what you are looking for. Um, if you want to head over to the uh, link, I'll actually drop it here uh, if anyone wants to. Uh, if you happen to want to, uh, to, to play around with this yourself, uh, you can head on over to the link here. Um, and you can nab yourself a free copy of Fusion 360. Um, oh yes, also the the check the check-in link. Someone has very ha very thankfully uh, dug dug out for me. You can find it. Uh, dang it, I sent it on the wrong one. Uh, you can find that here. Um, but yeah, ble so yeah, so, okay, awesome. This is actually a really good point. Thank you for bringing that up, uh, Ren uh, Renzami. Um, yeah, so. Compared to Blender, Fusion is specifically designed for um, like modeling stuff in a in a, in like an in like a manufacturing sense. So if you're trying to like build something and you want to like actually 3D print it, Fusion lets you do basically all. It, it has like all of the like inspection tools. You can do all like for example. So let's say I want to measure the like length of something. Right. Here, here's a great example. So I, I, I have no idea what the length of this like LCD screen is, but I want to know like, okay, let's say this point and this point, I want to know what the distance is between that. So I can just go in and like hit inspect, click
click measure and then like select those two points and I now know immediately that that is 147.1 millimeters. Like that's so easy. It's it's really really nice for that sort of thing. Um, what tool is this? This is Autodesk Fusion 360. Um, similarly, um, if if I happen to want to actually go and look inside something, uh, which is always always kind of wild. So let's say I want to like go and look underneath the hood of this. I can put a sectional analysis in, and what this then does is it lets me like almost like X-ray look through the front of it. Um, in order to then really start to like say, okay, right, actually, you know what? Instead of moving all these parts around, I can just start to look layers below it in order to figure out what's actually going on, which can be incredibly useful uh, when you're trying to like look into like um, into like bigger projects or like stuff where you've got like stacked layers. Um, that can be incredibly useful. Um, thoughts on Tinkercad? Uh, Tinkercad is awesome, um, but how do, how, how do I say this in a manner that's like nice but not like too nice? Tinkercad is a great way for like people who are like like if you're using it in like a school context or you're using it for like if, if you're like completely new to 3D modeling, Tinkercad is great. Um, however, if you have like any general understanding of like 3D model stuff or you really want to do stuff on like a heavy level, I highly recommend that you like grab a Fusion license because like learning, like if you, if you learn Fusion from the start, and I'd say arguably like the, the learning curve between Tinkercad and Fusion is probably pretty similar. Um, like there's a lot more stuff, like you get a ton more tools to like start out with, but like the initial stuff that you're going to be learning is generally the same. And if you get a good like level of understanding on Fusion, then you can do like so much powerful stuff once you start to like build on that understanding. Um, although I know I know a lot of people as well who are like, you start with Tinkercad, awesome. That actually like it like it's an Autodesk product. It gives you the same like it gives you the same like general understanding. And you can still like apply most of what you've learned in Tinkercad. You can go into like you can then go into Fusion 360 and be like, yeah, you know what? All of this like feels pretty much the same. Um, similarly with oh boy, okay, let's let we will go into the Blender argument later. Uh, but my personal argument there is that Blender is a 3D Blender is a 3D modeling tool. It is not a 3D manufacture tool, um, and therefore fundamentally, like Blender's great for designing stuff for um, like artistic purposes, but it fundamentally does not have the tools for doing like manufacturing stuff. Like if I want to be able to do like assemblies, where I want to be able to do like linking things together and having like joints and stuff. Um, like, and, like, and also the awesome example of this is like, if we go into here and I like pull out the, um, not as the axis, where's our X axis? Where is this the axis? X, 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 X. Where is, is it? Um, it'll be, ah, no, 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 I can do it with this. So you see here, if I pull this section up and down, you can see that that is riding on that specific section and it's riding on the belt as well. And the way that that works um, is, the, um, is that that is, that is built up as an assembly. So you can connect multiple different parts together and then build them into physical assemblies that are affected then by things like like you can have like one like one gear that turns that then turns other gears and you can then see how your whole assembly interacts with each other um which is not something that you can really do with blender um at all i am personally when it comes to like basically like even for like 3d modeling like um even for like 3D modeling, like artistic stuff, like if I want to, if I want to drop, I mean, we're getting way off topic here, but if I, if I want to do like 3D modeling, like artistic stuff, and I want to do, uh, this is sort of where we're going with this, is we're gonna, we're gonna do some artistic 3D modeling in Fusion in a minute, is if I go in and I create a form, then I can, for example, like create a box and be like, okay, uh, like here is, here's a, here's, here's a box, right? Uh, but then I can be like, uh, okay, you know what? I want to, uh, I want to like just like do some like weird crazy stuff with this box. Like let's say I want to like just drag this like make ma almost always make like a flipper. Um and it's like you know what even like even like you could like because of the fact that Fusion has like such good deforming tools even for stuff like this. Like I mean I basically made a golf club there. Um but 
<laughs> but if like uh, as, as as an uh, like I would say arguably even for like doing like really like fluid 3D modeling like that, Fusion still has more than enough tools to be able to do that like compared to Blender. Like you can do a whole ton of fancy stuff like this, and it just sort of happens. Um, but yeah, we'll finish the form. Um, and yeah, so that's a general a general sort of like uh, baseline understanding of how to do um, like hit that, that's like the base of like all of like the tooling stuff that we're going to use today. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna build a couple of things today. We're gonna build a couple of um, we're gonna build a couple of things that are more like practical stuff that you could potentially use. So we'll, we'll, we'll build almost like a mount for something or like a maybe like a glasses holder or something. Um, and then we will uh, build, the, the next thing that we're going to do after that is we are going to build ourselves a little desktop lahage um, in order to show off how we can combine both the like functional side and that like dynamic 3D modeling stuff that I was showing you a li just a little bit ago in terms of like forms and that side. Um, what about designing models for software use, like an interactive website using 3GS? Can we load models from Fusion into that? Yep, we absolutely can do. Um, so, one of the so well, in fact, I can, I can show you this, right? So, let's say um, like both. So, let's say uh, does 3GS take STLs? I'm like 90% 3GS takes STLs. Uh, yep. Uh, so, 3GS. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Yeah, so 3GS takes OBJs, which is absolutely fine. Because what I can do, like, let's say, for example, I want to take this one here. Um, right, uh, so I want to export that out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head on over up to the File tab, and I'm going to click Export. Um, and that's going to pop me up a... Uh, oh, boy. I've just realized I need to, like... Um, please hold. I need to re I need to change that screen share. Uh, <laughs> there we go. But yeah, what the options that you have when it comes to exporting, you have basically everything from like uh, like Fusion 3D files all the way through to OBJ, STLs, um, like the list of stuff that Fusion will give you is extensive. It basically will export into pretty much any format that you can think of. Um, including formats for other 3D modeling tools. So, for example, if you're using, like, uh, like for example, if you want to do something in, like, SolidWorks, you can take your, like, setup and export it in a SolidWorks file, um, and that all just works. Um, can, I re can I review your Titanium Blahage? Okay, this is, this is already getting interesting. <laughs> okay, uh, can I get... Oh, also, hey, Hannah, I did not see you there. Um, can I get this app on Ubuntu? Um... I good question. Very good question. I don't believe so. Um uh, no, I believe you if you if you were to run it on Ubuntu, I think you'd have to run it under a virtual machine. Um Oh boy. <laughs> okay, we are already uh, we're already being given um like submissions from within Fusion 360 here. Um, so we have ourselves um, our, our first Blahage submission of the day. Um, I love the teeth. That's that's hilarious. Um, it's just like the oh boy. And then it's just like uh, it's, see, I, 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 I this almost looks like a goldfish. I want, hang on, I wonder what happened. Let's 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 like if we extrude this out. Do we just get like? Oh my god, we've made an eel. This is like, wait, no, this has like, um... okay, no, 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 this, this is like an aircraft. Hang on, hang on, we need to like, uh, we need, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um... Uh, both. Okay, so we want symmetric. Uh join there we go we have created ourselves a blahage plane um i don't know why but uh that's there now uh i'm so sorry and this ladies and gentlemen is the power of what you can do with 3d modeling um yeah yeah 
Blahajet. It's 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 flying. Yay, it's good. Okay. Um Honestly, I agree with the, like, fast train thing, but I think that's mostly because of the, like, mohawk thing that's going on in the top here. Um, <laughs> like, that is- that's arguably the best bit. Um, and yeah, co cool. So now we have Blahage Airlines, except Blahage Airlines has, like, really, like, chunky wings for some reason, so we need to, like, fillet those. Um, to, like, call it, like, 15 mil. Um, and then for, like, aerodynamics. Let's, like, roll the front over. Um, hang on, no, we need to, like, chamfer that. There we go. There, don't, don't you tell me that doesn't look aerodynamic. That looks aerodynamic as hell. That's a, that, that, that's, that's a proper plane right there. All, all we need to all we need to do is like add jet engines, and and that is that is flawless. That is absolutely flawless. This is this. By the way, if you do happen to do uh do do the same thing that um, that that Vic did, and like send me a like like a Fusion 360 link for models that you've made, I will 100% like bring them up on stream and do horrific, ungodly things to them. Um, in fact, actually, uh, shall we see how long it would take to print this? <laughs> I... <laughs> let's let's find out, kids. Um, how how long how long would it take to three D print? Um... Oh my god, that's large. Um... Okay, right. Uh... We might have to scale this down slightly. Um... Oh boy. Scale? Yeah? Okay, that's done it, that's done it. So if we... Oh boy, it's not flat on anything. Um, I guess we can print it that way up. Uh... It... Okay, um... Let's see, but... Yeah, give me a... What, what is our... Uh, what, what, are, what are we thinking for this one? How long do we reckon this is gonna take? Um... 43 days? Uh, what else are we- what else are we looking at? Any other- one hour, three hour? Oh, one hour is optimistic. Even- for something that size, one hour is optimistic. Um, three hours a day? Uh, 20 hours. Why is it not symmetrical? I don't know, and I'm not- I'm too scared to find out. Um... <laughs> okay, slice? What are we looking at? It's still generating G-code. Oh my god. Six hours! It's a six hour print, so who nabbed that one? Uh... Da -da 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 -da. Um... By Price is Right rules, um... Both Adam and Anupa have got that one. Um... So congratulations, you are the winners of what is honestly the world's most ho horrifying goldfish. Um... <laughs> oh boy. Oh, every day I pray for the sweet release of death. Okay, let's uh, let's head back in um, and do some nice, fun, practical things. <laughs> because this has gotten a little bit out of hand. Um, do you get an extra point? Uh, yeah, do you... Uh, DM me on, uh, on Discord, uh, who was it? Uh, yeah, Vi uh, Vic J, uh, shoot me a, like, Discord message, um, or, like, at me somewhere with, uh, with what your, like, uh, like, with, with, with what your details are, and we will get you bonus pointed, because that is hilarious. Um, can we do a Blahage keychain? Well, we absolutely can, because we're gonna do a Blahage, which means that we can then start to do Blahage everything, because there's actually a problem. There's a real problem, um, which I've discovered. Um, and I'm about to demonstrate this problem to you right now, uh, which is, I need to find this, window, yeah, okay, so, if I search for Blahage 3D model, if I search for Blahage 3D model, and I go through, like, everything, there ain't no, like, there's, like, one of them. There's like one blahage. It's all IKEA furniture. Why is it all IKEA furniture? This one, this one costs twenty dollars, and its teeth aren't even right. Like, 
Look at this. Look at that eye. Look at that cold, unblinking eye. Look at that. Why? Um, like, look at I, 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 I got nothing. It's, it's, it, 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 like, look, it, 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 it's here. It, it costs twenty dollars. Why does this cost twenty dollars? Why? So I am deter I am convinced of the fact that we can do better. Um, because the two options that we have is either that one or this one. Um, which th this is slightly more where we're looking for. Um, but there's something about it that still feels very slightly off. Um, especially the like the f like look at the teeth. Like those those aren't like Blahage teeth. They're like too like. They're, they're like too like weirdy. Um, do you? <laughs> it, I mean, it's beautiful. Th this is this. Y you see this? You see? You you see this? This 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 baby could print like a whole like. Yeah, yeah. It's a look. It's a look. Here's a blahage hanging from a ceiling while they were trying to 3D scan it. Um, so basically, what they've done for this one is they 3D scanned a blahage, which is great. But it means that the Blahage isn't quite accurate to being a Blahage, which presents us with some problems. However, um, I do think that this means that we can likely... Um, let's see what we can do here. Because I think we should be able to actually import this into Fusion. And then we can start to take a look at what our starting point is. So, let's import ourselves. Firstly, I need to make a new f a new a new folder because no way am I leaving this in my main projects folder, like ever. Uh, Blahage or Blohai, as uh, the Swedish call it. Uh, fun fact: guess you did not know that. Um, there we go. Let's upload that in there. Um, paint me, paint me like one of your French blahages. Uh, chat, are you okay? I, I'm slightly concerned. <laughs> Blahage teeth are beautifully triangular. Yes, they are. Um, in fact, interestingly, um, we, at, we have, we have a small Hajj for reference here. Um, and I'm pretty sure that the... I'm pretty sure that the um, like dimensions are going to be roughly the same as an actual blahage, but I need to figure that out first. So we'll we'll base it off of a small hajj because I'm pretty sure that the like length is roughly the same. Yeah, from eye from eyeballing it, it looks about the same, just scaled down, uh, which I can live with. Um, so, okay, we've in we've imported that, so, um, let's head on over and import ourselves a Blahage. Um, so this is going to be Blahage to, uh, electric, uh, elect, uh, electric model aloo, uh, oh, god help me, um, Import, insert, insert, insert. <sighs> Not gonna lie, doesn't immediately inspire confidence. Um. <laughs> oh, that's horrifying. Oh, okay. Uh, ha ha. Ha ha. Okay. Um, I think we need to let, let's let's get rid of the demon. Uh, we're not. No. 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 That is that's my sleep paralysis demon right there. Um, I'm like an eighty percent sure. Um, okay. So. So. We're gonna base this off of a small Hajj instead because that, frankly, har like j that that just harms me on a level that I that you don't even understand. Um, 
So let's, the first thing that we need to do is that we need to measure our small Hajj. Because what we'll do is we'll, we'll model this to scale and then we'll size it down. So a small Hajj, let's see. A small Hajj tip to tail is precisely 41 inches. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're going to create ourselves a sketch. Um, and we're going to be looking at this from the front because this is going to be side on. And what a sketch does, sketches are your like, sketches are basically our like, uh, what, how do I put this? Sketches are like best friends when it comes to the Fusion 360 stuff because a good sketch basically allows us to tweak stuff later by just going back and changing numbers. Um, so, first things first is we need to... Um, what are we after? So let's... Yeah, let's get ourselves a line. Um, and we need... To, ooh, actually... I wonder. I wonder, 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 wonder. I'm trying to just, I'm just trying to work out the like. So we've got like two, we have like two parts to it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, try, so we're gonna start, and I'm just gonna like, I'm gonna aim to like freehand a small heart. Um, because what we really need here is like, um, in fact, actually, no, maybe this is. Let's let's take an alternate approach to this. I think this might be better done as a form. Um, so we will start with a sphere. As all good small hearts are. Um, yeah, the traditional approach is to do 3D sketch and then extrude, but I think for this, because um, what I'm trying to work out at the moment is how we can, like, make it as, like, small Haji as possible. Um, okay. I think we're getting somewhere with this. And then we need to sort of like extract this back out. I realize this is going to look really weird while I'm doing it, but I assure you this will make sense later. We're sort of just like, we're like, it, we're like creating a small Hajj from like individual um, small Hajj components, I think would be the best way to describe it. Um, in fact, then. Step one, likely, is going to be, um, let's go back in here, we're going to create a box. From there. And we're going to do like this. Because what I want to do first, is I'm going to uh, extrude our small Hajj, like, fin on the top. Um, and I want to see how that pan like starts out first because I think that's like our big, that's the big like like differentiating bit about a good small heart is it has to have the like the like the fin bit. Um, so it's got yep. So we've got a sort of like swoosh going. Then if we sort of like bring that in a bit, we've got to kind of, okay. Okay, I see, I see where we're going with this. So that's, uh, actually that could be our, yeah, that could actually be our like side, um, our like side bits. Interesting. Okay, I like this. So I'm going to make a copy of this. And I'm actually gonna bring it on over, and I'm gonna try and like 
rotate it 180 and then we'll flip it like 270 that way is that how that works i don't think that's quite how that works this is um, my first time i need to add ah joyce uh da, 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 where's mirror there's definitely a mirror tool in here somewhere yeah, so these are going to be our flippers in initially. At least that's my thought process. And then and then we'll sort of start to build the body out around it. Um, or at least that's kind of where I'm thinking we're going to go with this. Um, it's this one that I need, actually. Or is it? I need to like reverse, but you put the thing. Or what, what? What? Oh boy! Symmetry. Oh, th that's been dead in front of me the entire time. Here we are, mirror duplicate. There we go. Like I like I didn't spot that one before. Um, Create a duplicated body. Oh no, did it actually create a duplicate? Didn't create a duplicate. Mirror duplicate. So there. Mirror plane. No weld. Oh no, I need a con I need an offset plane actually. So let's like put one like call it like this. Put it sixty. I feel like that's enough. No, like a hundred. Ninety? Ninety. Um, that'll do. That'll do. So we'll pick this one. Uh, mirror duplicate. So we select that body. We select there. There are our two flippers. Which I think actually are like that, aren't they? Yeah, they go like outwards. Um, cool. So now we need to make ourselves um, another... We need to make ourselves not pipe, but a sort of... Uh, We'll make ourselves another box. We'll, we'll, we'll keep building everything off of boxes, because apparently that's the way that everything is rolling today. Um, so let's give ourselves a nice long one. And a nice wide one, more to the point. This is going to be our, like, blahage body. And this needs to be, like, quite tall, but then it sort of, like, drops down on the back of it. See, this is interesting, because this is, like, the first like the first time in a long while that I've done, like, form tooling. Um, and so I'm, I'm still, I'm very much sort of, like, learning this with you all as we go. Um, okay, okay. Okay, I like this one. There, okay. Right. So then, if we take this, like... There, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, we've done it. We've, oh, we've only gone and done it. Look at that. We've got our, like, Blahagian curve. Now what we've got to do is like bring it down towards the back of it. Hang on, we need to like bring it down there. Yeah, and it sort of like curves itself downwards. Then we like bring that up, give ourselves a sort of like tweak there. Um, and now we've got to like do the front of it, which needs to be like wide. This Bahaj is a wide boy. There we go. And then these sort of go back a bit. Well, not necessarily. They sort of like. Um... We need a sort of like. Yeah, that's it. I need like a, I need to like pull it in almost. Surface pull. Yeah. 
Okay, so let me do a sort of like, uh, where, what am I after? What am I after? Am I after? I need a like, yeah, subdivide, that's it. So I want to like subdivide that, but I also want to subdivide this so that we can start to sort of pull the big boy in. And this way, we can now start to get, ah, oh, there we go, that's done it, that's more like it. We start to get our like start to start to find ourselves the like the many the many faces of Blahaj. Um Okay, and then we do um another oh boy. Do another subdivide there. We subdivide this one, and we're sort of just looking basically to start to kind of bring the, um, just to start to bring that like, really sort of like, very like, there we go, that's more like it, sort of bring it down and in and just sort of like, Just give ourselves that sort of like that's not done it. That that side's right and that side isn't, which means that this is wrong. So if we get rid of oh no, that's we've made okay, so we made a porpoise. Uh, we've got that going for us. Maybe not quite that far out. Um submarine blast. <laughs> oh boy. That's that's gonna be a fun one to do. Um, but yeah, okay then. Thus resolved. Um, okay, so we're gonna like. Tweak that around a bit. I think those, those flippers actually are way too small. They need scaling up relative to this. So, what are we after? Scale, scale, scale... Is it edit form? Is that just... Oh yeah, because we have scale controls in here, I keep forgetting. There we go. Not gonna lie, I feel like I've sort of made modern art blahage, but I'll take it. Um... Okay, we'll tweak that around a little bit more. I need to try and get that uh, that left side in.
Yeah, those are very much off of it. Um, it's an artistic museum sort of thing. Yeah, it's kind of interesting how it's how this one's panned out actually. Um, I've had, to be fair, I've had a ton of fun figuring out the form tools so far. Um, let's see if we can like do a bit more on the front bit um, and be like. Tweak that round. Beautiful. So beautiful. I, 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 I can't, well, all, all this needs is like a top fin, um, and uh, and we can and we can call this a modern art piece. I need to render this. Oh, continue. Oh, no, we lost it. We're back. Phew. There we go. But yeah, I, uh, I am screenshotting that for perpetuity. I call it Blahage on ice. Mm, no, no. Hmm. Let's think this through a little more. We got any suggestions for this as an art piece? What's the what, what's what's the thought process? Yeah, let's see how things pan out. Um, so, if we tweak the back of this, um, big brain blahage. I, I like submarine blahage. That 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 I enjoy immensely. Um, but yeah, I think let's. Um, Let's actually see. Let's let's take an alternate approach here. Uh, okay. Turn. Yep. Done. Construction lines. Cool. Um, this is. Uh, to be fair, I had slightly underestimated the complexity of like just how. How do I put it? Just how. Ch not say chunky, but like. Okay. Let's do this sectionally. That's what we'll do. We'll, we'll do this section earlier sketches. That that feels like a better approach. Um, So we'll get rid of that. Okay, so what we're after is a... We want a crescent, because we're going to do the tail first. Uh, crescents, crescents, crescents. I need like a... It's, it's not quite a conic curve, is it? It's like a... It's a three-point... Three-point arc slot? Maybe? Um, let's see what our distances are for this. Uh, turn our calipers on, we're looking at about 120 points a point. So this is going to be 120, and then the point from interior to exterior, we're looking at about 65. Um, which 
which I think oh, I've done it the wrong way, haven't I? Of course I have. Um, center point arc slot width. Okay, so we're looking at 120, which is now fixed value. That's absolutely not what I was looking for. 100%. Oh my god. Three. Yeah, center to center slot, surely. Because this is now 120. No, because that's just a straight one. Yeah, so it is a three point. So, one, 120. And let's say. Let me, let's eyeball this. Um. There, I say we're looking about there. Um, because I forgot about it. Okay, so what we now have is we take a line from about here and we need a, what's it called? No, we need a conic curve. So we have one place there. We have one place like there. Well, and then we sort of just, no, because that's like, what the heck? that fit point spline i am just all over the place with these today it's because i'm trying to do it on the center line isn't it and i'm like yeah because this is like the whole point of it is like oh it's because i've done it on the wrong axes that's why that explains everything Where's it gone? Where's it gone? Where's it gone? Where's it gone again? Oh, the joys of 3D modeling. And we got it, I think. Let's start it like there and then go across to like, let's see. Actually, no, we can find out, can't we? Um, that's a 55 millimeter gap. Just need the arc though. There we go. So we're going 55 millimeters. There we go. That's done it. That's done it. And it's a slight under arc, but it needs to tangent. Yeah, that's probably it, right? So we've got a slight there. That needs to go to like. Let's call it like there. But it needs to be a like just a really subtle upper. Yeah, and then we just go back to about maybe here. Because we go back up again, don't we? Um, so we'll call it like, but that's a bigger gap. That's like 80, 80 millimeters. Also, you're, you're, if you wonder where I'm getting these numbers from, I'm currently holding a stuffed shark in my hand with a pair of calipers. Um, so that's how we're figuring this all out. <laughs> so that's like an 80, and then let's say that goes up to about there, which means that that's going to be like that. Um, and then we have like a gap from like here to there. Which completely did not work. Three point arc. 80. There 
There we go. And we then have what is a very, very, very supple curve down to the... An extremely supple curve, just like that. And then we have a, another like down to sort of like here -ish. Like so. And then we have a much bigger one, which goes like all the way down here, and it's almost like the entire like, it's like the entire like frontage almost. Um, like that, um, and then we have this sort of like, almost like a swoop under the belly. And then it goes back up, like quite aggressively, and then down to like here. Okay, okay. So this need this needs a little bit of work. Um, needs a little bit of tweaking, but I'm honestly fairly happy with that um there's a few bits that we need to like work out the detail of um Okay, so let's let's sort of start to work our way through this now, because um, we want some like there's a couple of things we want to do here, right? Um, like we've got what's what are the things that are like immediately standing out as being slightly bong? Um, that, okay, so this needs to come out a bit. Oh god, oh no, oh no. Um, that needs smoothing out a bit, but that's fine. We can likely do that in. Um, that needs bringing in a bit. This needs to move back, actually, I think. Um, if I provide this. Actually, I think that should be like 450. Did that create increased the size of it? No, it didn't. It just made us. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I think that's our that's our starting point. So now that we've got that, we will extrude it. And start to make ourselves a shark. So we've got about 120 mil. Like I said, chunky boy. Um, of which, oh, this is where it gets starts to get fun. So we need to, among other things. There's a couple of sections here that we likely need to extrude separately, which means we need to put some lines in. Um, so we've got one there, we need one here. Um, and we need a, so yeah, it's just, I think it's just those. 
So let's extrude the main body out to like 145. We then extrude our fins out to about 25. Um, and then probably about the same thing for our tail. Um, I think it's about roughly the same. No, our tail is about 35. Oh, did I extrude those as... Right, hang on. Extrude those as new bodies. Because we don't... We want to be able to move these ones well independently of the rest of the sketch. So this is our tail. This is our main fin. This is our... Is it a dorsal fin? This is it a dorsal fin? I'm pretty sure it's a dorsal fin. No, the, yeah, right, yeah, they're both dorsal fins. So this is the second dorsal fin. And that's just the dorsal fin. We're learning things about fish today. Uh, and then this is the main body. Okay, so these three, we need to like move basically into the middle. Eyeball this. Okay, okay. So let's start by like I need to sort of round this off, like, completely, but then I need to, like... I need to make this more, like, chamfer on the... But specifically on that top edge. Ooh, I don't know if that's it. I don't think that's it, but let's... Okay, hang on, let's... Let's see what happens if you fill it this one. I feel like this is going to fare better. Because all we need is a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of rounding. Yeah. That, I would say, is pretty much precisely what we're after, with the exception um, of the fact that that top bit needs to be rounded over. And we can fix that. And the way that we can fix that is if we go back into our sketch, and we just provide ourselves with another... Um, after a three point arc. Well, that can be like, yep, let's just go and add that. And now, if we um, gather all of this. This should give us something a lot more Bahaji. Front lines is... Well, is that the front? That's the front. There we go. Oh, that's deleted itself. Oh, okay. That's getting there. That's definitely getting there. Um, I'd honestly probably just delete that entirely and then have, like so. Uh, similarly, we can likely fill it this. And just sort of round it over. And we want to include that top bit because that's going to be our, like... Oh, that might have been the mistake I made on that one, actually. I think that might actually have been the mistake I made. 
Yeah, it was. I didn't pick the top edge. Now we understand our problem. Which is our issue. So if I go to a lake... Yeah, there we go. So there's an 8mm. Uh, we delete that. Then there are our two... Um, there are our two blockage points. Um, so we've got our we've got our top bit worked out. Um, I think we actually need to... Um, probably, we need to go back in again and just like... I need to like take these out and just make them like uh, more arc lines again. No, I need this. No, 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 no. no I need these to be like line lines. Which I'm not completely sure about, to be fair. Yeah, okay, we'll do it like that, and we'll just let the, like, smoothing stuff take its course. Um, and let's see what happened here. Missing profiles. Oh my god, what the... Not gonna lie, not completely sure what's happened with that one. Um, oh wow. Let's do it to like there. That'll do. That's more like it. And now, if we round the edges on this over, we should be in a much better position. Because now we can just be like, you get all of your rounding. Thank you and good day, sir. Also, for the record, if you're following along with this, don't worry too much about, like, Getting pretty much everything accurate because even I'm basically I'm like I'm like freehanding a lot of this at the moment um, in terms of what we could do. I'm intrigued as to why that though. Why is that the full? What happened there? Um, let's like let's like get rid of that. Um, there we go, that's more like it. Um, and then we are just going to take these edges here, pretty much the same as last time, and just round it all over. Um, in fact, I'm going to round pretty much every surface of this thing. Up to and including those inside diameters, and that bit. Which makes it everything. There we go. So there's a um, there's those bits. We then what we now need to do is we need to take the thick bit and we need to convert it into the thin bit, um, which I realise may sound slightly counterintuitive. Um, Select that, our splitting tool is that offset face. Now we've got this one, which we can now um, press 
pull. Should be able to do it on both sides actually. So if you go into like a about 40, 35? Yeah, 35 on that side. Press pull that in by like 35 on this side. What? Oh god, what? Okay. Right then. Push that in. Oh, that's not good. Did that offset face just... Oh no, it didn't. There we go. Why is it press pulling the entire side section? That's my real question. Let's try and uh, let's try and pull this in by a little bit. That's not what I was after at all. Are you kidding me? God, I love it. Okay. Okay, so we're after like 18 plus 30 is 120? 10? Let's see if that looks about right. I think it'll be 100. 5? Yeah, because we had a 5 offset. Yeah, that looks about right. So we've got that. And we now have our main dorsal fin body, which means that what we now need to do is we need to take all of these and we now need to move all of them centered. And these now need to be centered relative to the entire thing. Um, what do you mean this is no longer cute? It's adorable. It's, a, it's still getting there. It's a work in progress. So then. We now need to sort of uh, round these edges off pretty much in the same way that we did for the last ones. Here we go. This is this is getting there. This is getting there. It's starting to come together. So the only thing we've got to work out now Like the like the intermediate bit is how we like blend so there we go there we go I think that might be it okay we're starting we're starting to get there um, all we need to do, uh, all, we, all we need to do to, uh, this is turned into Blahage Airlines Part 2. <laughs> We're just going to keep making, a, like, texturally worse and worse Blahages, but it's going to be entertaining, and that's why you're all sticking around, right? At least I hope that's why you're all sticking around. Otherwise, this entire endeavor has been for naught. That's the wrong, is that the right blue? That, I think that's the wrong blue. We need to find a, like, Blahaji blue. That feels like a Blahaji blue. So, all of this goes in as Blahaji blue. And then, we actually need to have our, um, To do another offset plane to split this uh, from the bottom up. Because we need. Oh no, not enough. I need to go. What's it called? Uh, 
No, it is an offset plane. It's just an offset plane on an offset that doesn't exist, which is great. And the butter's my egg ball. Um, okay, there we go. That ought to do it. So let's do another split body, and we're going to split it on that. And then our splitting tool is going to be that. There, we're going to split that. And now we head back into appearance. And appearance is basically just what lets us set colors on things. Uh, but what we're going to try and do here is we'll set that to be white, and we'll set that to be. You see, this is this is beginning. This is beginning to get there. All we need to do is we need to we need to add a we need to add a mouth, and we need to add some uh, we need to add some teeth, um, and we need to round this front over. Actually, that's something that I've realised is actually a big problem with this. Is this Bohaj looks like a hippopotamus? Uh, <laughs> so I wouldn't. Not gonna lie, would not <laughs> zero out of ten would not recommend. <laughs> Okay, I think I think we're getting closer here. Um, what we need to do now, I think we probably need to like press pull. Oh, what? Ah, ah, ah! Hey uh, guys, we made a whale. Uh, we 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 offset phases to whale. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, that's a look. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie, y'all. I really want to see what that looks like with teeth now. Um, <laughs> I really want to see what it's just gonna have tiny eyes. Uh, okay, hit, okay. Do we want to make Blahage whale? I am I, I'm, I'm entirely on board with making Blahage whale, but the real question, <laughs> the real question is whether the audience wants Blahage whale. <laughs> Holy God! <laughs> well, you know what? Technically, we could reverse this later. So, oh no, we can't. What? Okay, there we go. What even happened there? Yay! <laughs> okay. So let's let's do what we probably should have done in the first place and just extrude that layer out. No, because we want to extrude. Oh, this is annoying. We need like a very specific, like. Let's. Okay, how does a Blahage mouth, like, look in reality? That's the. That's the difficult thing here, right? Is if you. Here's the problem. Every time, for some reason, every time I try and like press pull a Blahage mouth, everything just sort of explodes and then we end up with whales. So I'm not gonna lie, not completely sure what's happened here. Um, you can quote that one. Need a like. Oh, that might have done it. What I need actually is I need a. Um... There we go. So let's project those. Is that even the right plate? Oh my god. Okay, this has done it. This this has done it. This is what I was after.
So I actually want to make a new body on this, because what I can now do, if I could, what's this one? This is like the main body, so I want to take, ooh, no, not that, not that, are you kidding me? So for like the lower section of our blahage, we want to like, cut out these bits to the side. Objects to cut. Yeah, because that's basically it, isn't it? So then we just do like body like down to there. Oh god, not join, not join. Then we extrude that out to cut. And then do the same thing for the other side. And then we just get rid of the holder object. And if we bring that other body back in, we've got our sort of blahage mouth. Uh, and now all we need to do is add teeth. Which I think is probably going to be the most difficult part of this entire process. Uh, oh, and eyes. I almost forgot about eyes. Um... We should probably add eyes. Let's do eyes quickly before I forget, because the last thing that I want to do is end up in a situation where we've not got, like, actual, like, large eyes. So we want an ellipse. Yeah, that feels about right. What happened there? Yeah. And then you want, and then we need to offset that because it's got a ring on the outside by about two mil. And then we've also got a little blahage eye dot, which is about there. Okay. Hang on, that's, that's wrong, that's wrong, it's very wrong. I need to... That's it. So now, I just need to um, extrude this out. So we have uh, two mil for that section. Uh, we bring that back in. Two mil for that section. Well, it's minus two, technically, uh, for a new body. Change.org slash blahage. It's not that bad, guys, all right? It's just got some structural problems. Um, Blahinder. Oh, God. Um, so now we need to set this to be... We need to set... Oh boy, hang on, hang on, where's everything gone? Why is everything white? There we go, so that's now black, and then I need a brown. What is going on here? Uh, sketch, get away. I have no interest in keeping you here. Uh, where is our paint? We're gonna add a new paint. No, that's the wrong... Oh my god, why? Right then. That's what I'm after, and then we want like a sort of like a blahaji, like sort of light brown. I'll tell you what, I think the eyes are actually the best thing that I've done for this. Um, 
And I'm not saying that just because I, it's also the only thing that I've been able to do properly for this. Uh, okay, so we're going to call this I. Then we're going to move it over and put it where I should be. The hard eyes are also like slightly angled up. So we want to move and copy, create copy. Now all we need to do is replicate the appearances. So it has white there. White there, black there, and then whatever that like glossy brown that we had was, which is technically this one. There we go. It's getting there. It's getting there. How are we thinking about this now? Is this more, is this more palatable? You're happy with this? I feel like this is a. This looks sort of like a blahaz. This is like getting cuter as we add eyes and other things. So now all we need to do is like add the like the, like the mouth bit and the teeth. Um, which is where things are going to get like really complicated. Which I'm fully expecting to be a problem. Okay, so let's get ourselves a, another one of those gorgeous three-point arcs going. Oh no, on the wrong sketch angle. It's going to go this way. So I'm like, let's get ourselves an arc going. Three-pointer. Awesome. And we're going to just put a, a across that. And then what we now want is we want our teeth, which are little arcs of their own. Actually, they are, fun fact, they are not in fact, uh, they're not in fact uh, pointy. Well, house teeth are not pointy, but well, house teeth are round. Um, but I need a sort of like... Fit, maybe a fit point spline is the right thing to go for here. No, it isn't. It absolutely is not. Why would I ever consider that? What I need is like a half of a triangle, but I don't know if that's necessarily going to be the way that this works. Curve? Conic curve, maybe? Yeah, conic curve. Conic curve, I think, might well be the way to go with this one. fact, let's see what we can do with this. Oh my god, we can actually make a ha we can make a happy barrage.
like a sort of peachy color or something after, isn't it? It's like very peachy, so it's like on the like pinker side. Yay! Look at him! Look at how happy he is! That's so good! Now all we've got to do is add that elusive tooth. Do we actually have a tooth? Is that like actually an? Oh, it's not. Interesting. Well, there we go. That ought to make that extrudable now. At least it would do if everything else under the sun was not in the way of it. Oh my god, it's just eyes. <laughs> oh my god, it's just eyes! We'll do it with another comic curve. There we go. mouth in there. Then we're going to start dropping our teeth in. This is why I'm very excited. Because if this bit works, then we should theoretically have all of the functional parts that would make a Wahaj. Now we just need. Uh, well, actually, let's do a pattern. Um, so we are going to do. This is going to be like four millimeters apart. You think? Direction. Here we go. Ten, eleven. There's some blahaj teeth. And now we put some more in. Yeah, see he's adorable! the blahaj. Look at this the blahaj. In fact, actually, before I put that tooth in, I'm going to round this underneath bit off a little bit. Right, and we are almost done, I think. It's uh, taken us just under two hours to three build, design, and 3D model one blahaj that was slightly horrifying, but also generally fine, um, and then one that is a lot better. Um, I think that we will take... Frankly, I will take that one on the balance of probabilities. Um, so if we put that one there, then we'll do another pattern. I'm going to pick this one. Our direction is going to be that way and our number is going to be let's call it like eight or seven lahajes don't have quite as many teeth across the bottom cool 
call it like that. Um, Oh wait, what? Wait, what happened? We lost our teeth. We lost our poor high's teeth. But no. Right then. Uh let's get our pattern in last. And then once this is done, uh when officially STL for Blahaj and Blahaj and finished. Uh you want the STL for Blahaj jet? Are you sure? I mean, I can give you the. I, I, I am. I am happy to release the STL for Blahaj Jet, but is that something that you really, that you, that you guys really want in your life? Like, I don't, I don't quite. Okay. Okay. I got nothing. I got nothing. The direction. Cool. We need like uh, eight of them. Nine of them, actually. No, only eight of them. What the error? Compute pattern failed. Cannot be intersected with the original body. Try changing pattern settings or adjusting. Okay, that's interesting. Why is that not even? That's freaking wild. Let's maybe take it out a bit more. See if that fixes it. Because we are so close. We are so close to having ourselves a functioning blahage. No, not faces. Bodies. That might be part of our issue. Eight. Eight. That all seems happy. There we go. We got our Blahaj teeth in. So now all we got to do. There we go. We need to we need to bring those like back. I think. Because these are like. Is it like that one and then like? Yeah. So these are all made to go like back a bit. So like. Actually, no, they need to go to about there. Uh, which is about where they were, actually. Yeah, then we just need to bring a... Uh, we just need to bring a mouth out to match them. But yeah, there we go! And then once... Uh, once, Yeah, once... Uh, I'll, I'll do a little bit of cleanup on this. Uh, make it look a little bit better. But we have... Functionally... That that looks pretty blahaji. For, for an hour's work, and a little bit of elbow grease... Um, that's not that bad. Like, if we do the side-by-side, -side, I can I can see the resemblance. I can definitely see the resemblance. Uh, we just need to smooth a few bits out, tweak a few bits, and yeah. Yeah, thank you all very, very much for coming. It has been absolutely marvelous to, uh, uh, t show y'all the joys of, uh, what you can do when you, uh, jump into Fusion 360 and attempt to make a shark. Um, because, oh lordy, I got... I heavily underestimated how difficult it was to make a shark. But, yeah, thank you all very, very much for tuning in. Um, and I will see you all at some point. Um, likely uh, likely in the uh, in the next... Well, who knows? Probably, definitely within the next month or so. But I imagine uh, you'll, find me, uh, you'll find me hanging around in it. So if you happen to come and find me, uh, most definitely do so. Um, ooh, can we see how long much it takes to print? That's a good question. That's a very good question. Um, so if we export this entire model, let's 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 make our bets. Place place your bets on how how long it is going to take us 
to 3D print a Wahaj. Also, I need to show you the, uh, there we go. Let's jump into Fuchsia Slicer. Okay. We've got our print settings here. What are we thinking? This is a chonk. This is a big chonky boy. How big is it? Great question. This is... Tip to tail, this is 431 millimeters. Uh, 15% infill. All right, let's slice it. It's taken its time. Nine hours and 22 minutes. That's honestly not bad for like a scale, like a small high scale shark. That's pretty dang good. But yeah, thank you all. Thank you all very much for tuning in. It has been an absolute pleasure. Um, do keep an eye out um, for the STLs. Once I clean them up a bit, I'll uh, I'll likely pop them somewhere in one of the init channels. Um, so keep an eye out for those. Uh, but otherwise, I will see you all next time. Have a good one.